Hey everyone, my name is Trevor Daly with MagMod. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for another How I Shot It. This week, I'm chatting with Jesse Rinka. In fact, let's go ahead and bring him in right now. Jesse, what is going on? What's happening, everybody? How's it going? Hey, Jesse, I, before we even get started, tell everyone where you're based out of. Sure thing. Yeah, I'm based out of uh, Westchester, New York, so about 20 minutes uh, north of um, New York City and a little town called Terrytown, right on the Hudson River. What's it called? Terrytown? Terrytown, yep. Nice. Right on. And Jesse, what? Uh, I also want to bring up your Instagram and stuff. So I'm going to pull this up and maybe you can just tell everyone kind of, it looks like it's Jesse underscore Rinka. Is that right? Yep. Jesse underscore Rinka is the uh, main Instagram page that we manage. And that's where most of our, our wedding work is going to be seen. Um, we also have a secondary account, which is going to be Jesse Rinka underscore portraits. Uh, so essentially we've split up any kind of like studio portrait work uh, from the wedding work. And uh, we manage two pages, so you can see uh, different styles of work uh, on those two pages there. Nice. In fact, let's actually bring up that second one as well. Uh, here's here's the portrait one, which I love. Got all these very very cool posts. In fact, one of these shots we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, and then let's bring up your website as well. Um, you get this incredible website. I love this very first image, the, the the big gallery. You know, fill up the whole page type image type thing. Super cool stuff. Yeah, we uh, we updated the site a few years back and um, took a totally different approach. Uh, obviously, changed the domain to jessyrinka.photography instead of jessyrinka.com. But I noticed that. Um, yeah, I think when it, it would come out, like maybe six years ago, we had an opportunity and we just figured the company's Jesse Rinka Photography. Let's just make it easy. That's I, I think that's a great idea. Do you do you find that it's pretty easy for people like when you're talking to people to say, hey, it's dot photography? Like does it does it kind of roll and everyone pick it up? I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't I don't know if I've ever had to really share the website that often. I feel like most people will just grab it from Instagram or, or Facebook. Right. Uh, but it's worked out well. We continue that's to get cool. good traffic to it. So I love it. Well, hey guys, if you are tuning in, in fact, Jesse, I'm gonna pull up our screen real quickly so we can see comments. Um, as I tell you guys, if you're pulling, if you're watching, and uh, um, I always love seeing where people are watching from, and I also love uh, you know any kind of questions or anything like that that you have. By all means, feel free to post those in here. Um, and you guys know if you've never seen this episode before or never seen this show before, I love bringing those comments right up on screen. So if you have any questions for Jesse. Uh, feel free to post those in the, so we do these live on the MagMod page. So if you're watching this in the MagMod community, click on the link, go over to the MagMod page on Facebook, and that way everybody can see it. Uh, throw your comments up there, throw any questions up there. And like I said, let us know where you're watching from. I think it's always fun to see, um, you got like Chris Leon right here. He's saying, hey, I'm going from Tucson, Arizona, which is the, the base for MagMod. So we appreciate <laughs> there you it. Go. Man, Chris. That's awesome. Um, so right on. Well, Jesse, with all that, let's go ahead and let's jump into your first image. Um, oh, we got, look at this. We got uh, mommy. I love it. She's watching from UK. Love it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I think it's like, like seven o'clock there maybe, or something like that. It's a little bit late. We got oh, Houston, okay. Texas as well. Uh, thanks Robert for uh, tuning in. We got Robert, Rob tuning from New Hampshire. Uh, oh, I like this one, Norway. There you go. <laughs> and here's another one from Ireland. Nice. I like it. Appreciate you guys. Um, so again, Jesse, let's jump right into your images, and uh, and then I'll uh, I'll keep throwing up these comments and stuff. But uh, um, let's go ahead and start with. Whoops, I did the the wrong place here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. That's your website. Let's uh, hold on. Hold on a second. Let me bring this back here. I got to bring up my little keynote. This took up the whole page here. Let's try that again. Let's see if this works. There we go. Thanks. All right. So Jesse, tell us about this shot right here. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, this is a venue uh, called Le Chateau in South Salem, New York. And um, they have this beautiful up, upstairs area, bridal suite, and uh, really, really just beautiful indoor space to, to utilize. So um, with the bride, we were getting ready to go down uh, for her first look. Uh, to see the groom and I'm a big guy when it comes to symmetry that's very important to me so seeing this scene here I just immediately saw the lines I saw the curb on the railing and I just had to I had to put her in a position to sh showcase her dress there so uh, we had to do it rather quickly I knew um, being that there was still a bunch of light outside I wanted to make sure I exposed properly for uh, for the outdoor area Mm -hmm. um, and also I knew those kind of lights on either side would also, uh, work a little bit better 
uh, if I had exposed, uh, you know, for that outdoor scene. So yeah. uh, it was really simple in terms of lighting. We took a single Evolve 200 or 8200 um, off to the right hand side, just out of the frame. Uh, we had a uh, sphere on that and uh, pretty simple coming from making sure her, her direction of her nose was pointed kind of towards that light and uh, just enough light to not kind of pollute the scene too much. I think that was important to the control there. I love that. Jesse, I think there's a couple things that are really important to, to point out here. And, and one of them is the fact that you got that, that landscape behind the windows where the windows aren't blown out. Because I think so often, even when I'm shooting these types of scenes, like I'll, I'll put them in front of these beautiful windows and then we blow it out and just make it look super bright and kind of, you know, airy, light and airy or whatever you want to call it behind them. Um, but yep. really what to me, what makes this image so special is that you can see that background. It almost looks like it almost looks like a river behind the place or something. Or is that just snow? <laughs> it is was a snow? it was a December wedding. So that was snow on the ground. Uh, OK, that's really cool. That's really cool. And then the other little tip that I just picked up from you there is where you said I had her nose point towards the light. Do you normally tell your clients to kind of like, like as you put that light up, do you say like, hey, have your nose or, or look towards the light or how do you normally direct them? Yeah, so I, uh, well, for me, that's kind of like a rule of thumb, depending on their position and pose, but more or less, I'd like them to, to kind of have that chin and nose directed towards the light. Uh, especially when they're on like a side profile like this. And if I were to be a little bit closer to her, I might have her turn even a little bit more to camera uh -huh. so I could see a little bit more of her left eye. Um, but at this distance, I wasn't bothered at all by that. Gotcha. Love it. Um, so pretty, man. And I'm sorry, which which modifier did you say you used for this shot? Uh, this was just an AD200 with a sphere uh, okay. attached as well. And I, I was actually trying to remember if I had the, uh, the grid on there. Um, I may have because honestly, there's not a lot of pollution uh, to the yeah. scene around her. So I, I, I'm pretty sure there may have been a grid on there as well. I'm sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, no, no, that's totally fine. It does. It kind of does look like there. It's it's more of a gridded or controlled light right here, right? I mean, as opposed to like yeah. If I, I think if I just used the sphere, I would have seen a lot more light hitting the stairway, and and uh, yeah. it probably would have ruined the image a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Jesse. Right before we came on, you and I were talking about how often sometimes it's hard to just step back and grab those behind the scenes shots. And, uh, and just because you're, you're in the middle of the, you know, the, the shooting and, and you just don't even think to like, oh, I got to step back and grab this. Right. Um, but this next shot that we're actually going to show, uh, you actually do have quite a few behind the scenes shots. So I, I look forward to uh, kind of sharing this with everybody. I just want to show real quickly. We have a few more uh, uh, commenters here tuning in from Ohio, North Carolina, Tul Tulsa, Oklahoma. Appreciate you guys being here. Um, so let's jump into this next photograph and you can actually see Jesse's going to kind of walk us through. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's not this one. It's the one after. Oh, look at that. We yeah, even got the more excited. The <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about this one first. Totally fine. Yep. So this is from our most recent wedding uh, we shot just back in February. And uh, so, yeah, another another cold one here in the Northeast. We had a ton of snow um, all on the grounds. But uh, again, they had tons of different rooms uh, that were just amazing to shoot in. Uh, she fell in love with this room, kind of the library room. And, uh, you know, I really didn't want to, like, again, ruin the ambiance that was there already by, you know, that lamp on the table and the, the light on the wall yeah. as well. So, again, control was going to be important because I really just wanted that feel. I didn't want it to feel like we just blasted the room with light. So in this case, I hadn't my assistant was just off to the left, uh, just out of frame. In fact, during post, I think I may have uh, content aware filled him out just a little bit. Um, and again, we use that AD 200 just cause it's quick and easy. And in this case we had again, uh, a sphere just to soften it a little bit, but a grid for control. And I think a quarter CTO as well. Uh, you wanted to make sure we kept the light, uh, similar temperature to what was kind of, you know, existing in the room. Yeah. I, I love that how you matched it because it basically the light on them, it looks like as if it were coming from you know, in the room. I mean, it, it doesn't look like, like you created it, which makes it, which is wonderful. And, and we all know as photographers that there's no way that, that, you know, this is what light in the room is going to look like, but, but your eye visually, like, it doesn't make you think like, oh yeah, this was some special light that they brought in. It, it uh, really is an amazing shot. And I love right, and I, Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I know like when it comes to like the posing and sometimes the expressions, um, you know, sometimes people will question why they look so serious, you know, on their wedding day. But um, this was kind of a pre-planned, uh, you know, shot went over with the bride and groom and we kind of decided, yeah. do, you know, 
what's the right approach you want to take? And we said, well, let's stay more serious on this one. And so that's why they're not smiling, but they are happy, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you got plenty of happy shots as well. Hey, a quick question from Amanda. She's saying, how do you know what CTO to use? Is there, is there uh, so a that's, way? That's a good question. I think typically, like I kind of tend to use the quarter and the half. Um, uh, I don't have any real scientific method for it. I kind of <laughs> shoot with it. If it looks good, I, I stick with it. Um, yeah. You know, there are times where, you know, I've been out and, and decided, okay, well, there's not enough color in the sky. Let's, you know, bring the white balance up to 9,000 or drop it down to 33 or, and then obviously you have to offset with the, either the CTO or CTB. But uh, most cases, if I just want a little bit of warmth, I'm just going with a quarter CTO. Yeah. You know, I, I think for me, a lot of times what I think is if I just need to add a little bit of warmth, like you're saying, then I'll just use a quarter CTO. If I walk into a room and... Um, I can see that it's a little bit more tungsten lit. It's a little bit more kind of yellowish and I want to, to really kind of complement or help that or offset that. Then I'll go to that half CTO. And then if you walk into a room and it's just like super yellow and you're like, wow, I need to, I need to basically match this, you know, and you can tell like visually, you can just see that how yellow it is from all the old tungsten light bulbs and things like that. Um, yeah. then it's going to that full CTO or like you mentioned in the, you know, changing the color of the sky or whatever. And I really want to make a dramatic effect and it's that full, but I would say probably the two most popular gels are the, the quarter and the half. So that would definitely, definitely start there, Amanda. Um, Jesse, you got, uh, you got people, I can't even keep up with the comments here. You got, uh, people telling you how beautiful these shots are right here. Um, thank you. I wanted to share this one because it was fairly recent and actually ended up being one of the most, uh, I guess, well responded to images I've posted in the community. So nice. uh, I felt it was fitting to, to put it in the mix. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you sharing that. You even got Mauricio. He's an amazing photographer as well. He did a how I shot it with us. Uh, Jesse, let's jump into this next shot. This is where I was jumping the gun a little bit. And saying yep. this is the one that we actually have kind of a, a, a series of shots where you show behind the scenes. So uh, tell us about this. And maybe as you're talking about it, I'll kind of cycle through the, uh, the images. Sure thing. Yeah. So this, this ended up for me personally just being my favorite image from 2020. Uh, it was, I think, the last wedding of the year. Uh, but it was one of those examples where I think, um, you know, as photographers, we have to get into this exercise of um, not being afraid to experiment. And, um, you know, I've always kind of had these ideas in my head. I've seen them done in, you know, within the community and such, and, and I've kind of maybe been hesitant to kind of go for it in the past. And, you know, this is kind of a learning lesson for me that, you know, in this case, I did go for it. And then you know, I ended up getting what, what ended up being my favorite image of the year. So um, it was a composite, uh, multiple images, and we can flip through and show them um, mm -hmm. sort of the scene where we started with. So this was up in the bridal suite. And I did see this area. It was, it was just something about it, something about the mirrors again, um, I knew that I kind of had an opportunity here to do something. I didn't go in with the pre-plan. It wasn't like it just kind of came to mind. I said, well, let's go for it. We had some extra time uh, before their cocktail hour started and they were just nice and relaxed. So I said, hey, you know, are you guys up to try a shot? And 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 they were a great couple. So they were all for it. Um, we spent a few minutes testing. So uh, luckily, you know, you do need a, a set of hands for this type of shot. So if we go to the next, I'll show you the first frame. Uh, again, this was pre-tested with our assistant and our second shooter. My second shooter, Joe, here is is kind of doing the honors of being the uh, voice-activated uh, light stand. Um, so we have, a, again, a Evolve 200. We had to, for that ultimate control, <laughs> we double-gridded it. Um, and I think, again, a quarter CTO as well, again, just to match kind of that, that feel of mm -hmm. the lights that were available in the room. And I knew... Being that those mirrors were there, I wanted to be sure that we underexposed um, with yeah. the ambient so that we can eliminate any kind of reflections uh, in you know behind the bride and groom. So uh, placing them, I guess, in the frame was important. I wanted a little bit of them to be visible, actually off to the left and right. Um, so it was a little bit of you know trick getting the composition exactly where I wanted, and then without using a tripod, I just kind of had to hold as still as I could as we worked through the images. So we did her first. Then we swapped positions and did the groom next. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think, as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, we have some kind of spill hitting the wall. So it's kind of giving us that white area that we don't want. Uh, and that's where really the uh, plate shot comes in uh, most important for the composite. And so again, that's no subjects, no light, just ambient. 
And that allows us to kind of layer and stack in Photoshop. I, I did a little video on this, uh, put it out there on my YouTube channel, just showing you the process and how I kind of made it come together. Um, but ultimately, yeah, with a little bit of post-production, um, we, we ended up with this image that, I mean, for me, it was my favorite. And that's, uh, I, was, I was very proud of this, proud of my team who helped me out. And bride and groom were, were happy. So that's, that was a win. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I love this shot as well. And and it's, it's certainly not an easy shot. Jesse, I just, uh, I heard you mention your YouTube channel. Um, I would be remiss if we didn't uh, at least bring it up and show everybody. Uh, is, is this your YouTube channel here? Yeah, so you'll find a mix of, uh, we also offer cinematography, so you're going to find a bunch of, uh, uh, of our work, our video work um, mm -hmm. on there. But from time to time, I do post a tutorial or a walkthrough. Um, I'm kind of not good with keeping up on that, but. <laughs> we'll, try and be, we'll try and be better <laughs> no that's awesome so you guys go check him out jesse rinko photography give him a subscribe uh you got uh the mag mod challenge right here we got different gels and mag masks and here's the shot that he was just talking about the composite with the portrait uh so definitely go uh go check that out uh i, I know it would be uh um it'd be fun to see even more uh videos in the future jesse so once you do have more time i'm sure you do a great job we'll have to go watch more of those Yep, I got a lot um, to give. I just need to dedicate myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's awesome. Well, and, and you know, Jesse, I, you do some stuff with Adorama as well, or, or you, you were prior to the whole pandemic. Yeah, prior but... to uh, COVID, we were uh, doing, I think, about four or five, uh, you know, in-store events uh, a year with them. So that's awesome. Just talking all things wedding photography. So we hope to get that back someday soon. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's coming soon. Coming soon. Um, hey, Abby was asking, I think this goes back to that question about the CTOs. Uh, will skin tone play any role in your choice for CTO? Um, I, I don't, I don't think so. I think more or less, I'm just looking for the kind of ambient mm -hmm. in, you know, that's existing and, and how I can best match the light coming yeah. out of the strobe to, to no, fit that. Yeah, no, I tend to agree with you. I, I, I don't, I, I think the, the gels, they work with any skin tone, like it doesn't matter what color the person is. It seems like it always works. And really it's just kind of creating that natural looking light. I, I find that when you shoot a flash without a gel on it, it almost has like a bluish yeah. tone to it. And so it's just kind of warming up that light to make it look more natural, like daylight or, you know, light in a room. So, yeah, I mean, there's always different approaches to like, do I want this to look like it was lit? Do I not want it to, you know, so you have to figure that out first and then go from there in terms of how you build the scene out and how you want to handle your ambient underexposed, you know, yeah, it's just, there's certain things you, you got to know what you're going for. I agree. Hey, Ravi is asking a question. He says, you remember your shutter speed on something like this? Is there, maybe you don't know the exact shutter speed, but do you know what you would normally go for when you're creating something like this? Uh, well, I can, uh, so in this case, I was at uh, 1 3 20th of a second. Okay, so you're high speed syncing it then. Just just into high speed sync. Yeah, yeah. I was at F4, uh, ISO 200 with the Sony A9 and a 35 millimeter. So I was probably using the 16 to 35 G Master lens at 35. Nice. Nice, nice. Uh, I like this comment from Mauricio. He says, I need a Magma t-shirt like Jesse's. <laughs> yeah, man. As soon as, uh, as soon as those became available, I jumped on it. I, I would love a hat too. You guys got to make some hats. You know what? We actually, uh, hey. Check this out. Uh, it's, it's pretty dirty. Um, oh, here, I guess I should go uh, side by side so you can see this. Here's my, uh, <laughs> look how dirty it is. This is me out, out working outside. Uh, that's why it's so dirty and nasty. Um, but that's, I've we seen, do uh, JD, I think either in New York or Las Vegas, I don't remember, but he had a, a Magmod hat and I was like, yeah, get that? Like, yeah, they're pretty sweet. Fun. Actually. Um, they're, they're nice hats and they actually, uh, they were made by a local company here. Gosh, I'm just embarrassed by how dirty mine is. Um, <laughs> but they were made by a local company and, uh, branded bills is the name of it. And, uh, yeah, pretty sweet hats. I yeah, and I was gonna order some hats from them, but I didn't want to order so many. Yeah, no, that's the thing. We, I, I would love. I, I think they're like twenty five dollars a piece or something. They're, they're like not cheap hats for us to make. So we only had like maybe eight or so made, but, um, but yeah, we'll have to look into it. Hey, a uh, couple more quick questions. Marta is asking, what's the must have gel to have? Do you have like a, a one that you I go mean, to the most? If you're gonna pick one, I got. I think you got to go with a quarter or a half CTO. I just feel like that's yeah. gonna be the most used, depending on what you're shooting. But for wedding photography, I think that's probably the one I would, I would pick. 
Yeah, no, I'm, I would I would probably agree with you there. Uh, Darcy, this probably is more of a question for me than anything, Jesse, but it's just, she's saying, when, when will the Pro Lighting Kit come back in stock? Darcy, we actually just got a ton of product delivered uh, after waiting uh, for a little bit because uh, we were out of stock, but we just got a ton delivered and we have shipments going out to all the different dealers. So B&H, Adorama, those places should have those uh, very soon if they don't already on their website listed in stock again. Um, so definitely uh, go check those places out. And if not, check out our website as well. You might see them there. Um, right on, Jesse, let's jump back into um, this other image here. We're gonna go on to this, the, uh, this is another one. Dude, these images are so incredible, dude. Tell us about this one, how you shot this. Awesome, yeah, so this was um, later in the reception. I knew I wanted to kind of um, do something with this fountain. It's one of the kind of focal points of this venue. And um, uh, we had already discussed, hey, you know, probably gonna sneak you guys out at some point at night. Uh, again, I think preparation was important. We came out pre-tested. Uh, and you know, it's a, this is one of my, uh, couples, they're both Italian. So I figured, you know, color choices, I'm going to go with the red and green. It just kind of made sense. Um, and, uh, those lights that you see, uh, so it's a, again, I use the flashpoint system. So it's evolve 200, um, each off to the left and right, pretty far back. Um, and you know, framing it up, I wanted a little bit of that light. So I, I just made sure those were just at the edge of my frame. Um, Again, I'm using a wide angle lens here um, and just pointing those, uh, those. So I got the red gel on the right and the green gel on the left, just pointing them in a way where I can get enough light X, you know, exiting that fountain. Um, and then I have uh, a little bit of light, of course, hitting each of them. Um, but I didn't want it to completely overpower the scene just to give it, you know, a little bit of flavor, if you will. Um, now for the main light, I wasn't using my mag box in this case. It was just another soft box, but it could have been lit with the, with the mag box pretty easily. Um, it's just one of those scenarios where we used what we had available. And, uh, yeah. so I had that light off to the right, uh, raised up high, just out of the frame. And, uh, yeah, we took a couple nice. of quick frames and got them back into the party. You know, we don't like to take too much of their time once they, uh, once they get to their venue, but we like to give everyone at least something that's a little different and unique. Yeah, it is pretty, man. I so just so everyone knows, I've heard you mention Evolve two hundred a few times. It, that's the that's the basically the same as the Godox two hundred. It's just the bought through yep. Adorama. Is that right? Bought through Adorama. Yeah, they just tend to be the the one place I shop at yep. most. So yeah, gotcha. Cool, cool. Um, um yeah. So if, so if you guys hear Evolve two hundred, when he's what he's referring to is just the the Godox AD two hundred. I just figured that might be a question that pops up. Um, yeah, again, I think with this, with this pose, Trevor, sorry. Um, again, it's, mm -hmm. it's positioning them in a way where I'm having her again, turn her chin and nose towards the direction the light is coming in. And I think that's yeah. ultimately most flattering for her. Um, and you know, we still get a proper light on the groom as well. Um, yeah. but you know, a lot of times, you know, you, you, some people may struggle with where do I put the key light, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, I guess, like I said, going back to my method is usually I want to have kind of the bride uh, pointing towards the direction the light is coming from. Yeah, I love that. Um, another question here from Al. He says, uh, how often do you use ND gels for indoor shots? I don't know. Did we mention, we, did we talk about ND gels? We didn't really talk about um, it. No, we, I mean, we haven't mentioned it yet. I, I honestly, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever used the ND gel that's, mm -hmm. that came in the set. You know, I... I've yeah. seen, uh, um, I think guys like Jason, Jason Vincent, um, talk about how he uses it. I, I've, I've just haven't found myself in that scenario yet where I, where I said, Oh, I got too much light. I need to cut it. Yeah. Um, in I'm, those I'm cases, actually in the same boat to, um, just a, a regular, uh, speed light. Yeah. No, I'm in the same boat. I've never, I, I feel like ND gels, I might have to use one if I use like a larger studio strobe or something and the minimum power that it puts out is still too much. But the only other time that I've, I've really had thought, oh, I should use an ND gel is when I've had to use something like close, like macro photography, and I got to get my, my flash in really close, maybe with like rings or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's going to come a day where I'm going to go for it. I keep it in the wallet and uh, it'll be there when I need it, but I haven't used it yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm or another trick, you didn't have one. Jason just posted about it recently. He said he double stacked, I think, uh, an orange and a blue on top of each other just to cut the light a little bit. And those two colors offset each other so that's gotcha. another trick yeah there you go if you don't have that nd gel handy i like that uh cheer cheerila christian i hope i said that right 
uh, is asking white balance in auto or manual? So I would say probably 90% of the time I'm leaving it uh, in auto. Mm -hmm. um, but again, just reacting to what I see on the screen on the on the back of the camera. So if it looks off and I need more control uh, or set a specific Kelvin, then I'll go in and, and switch it. But uh, generally, I'm leaving for the most part on auto. Nice, nice. Um, and and this guy again, I'm gonna I'm gonna mispronounce your guys' names. I apologize. Uh, he he'd mentioned a few times. Uh, big fan of Magmod, and uh, he's chiming in. Uh, so I appreciate you being there. Uh, and. Uh, here we go. Here's another question from Marta. And before we go on to this uh, final images, uh, how many lights do you usually use to light the couple? Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't necessarily want to bring out too many lights if I don't need to. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, based on what I want to achieve. Uh, obviously, less is more, I think, in my opinion, but I'll put a light wherever I need in order to, to come away with the best result. But I think for the most part, um, you know, if it's daylight, I'm going to try and find a way to utilize maybe the sun uh, as mm -hmm. a rim light, a natural rim light, and then um, come back in with my key light. So a lot of times it's just one, it's just one key light, but when it gets dark and you have to start, you know, creating more depth, um, that's when you bring out the multiple lights to, to kind of create those rim lights and, or, or, you know, even accent the, uh, the architecture behind the couple. Nice. Uh, so usually one, sometimes two or three, if you, if you absolutely need it. Yeah. In, in this case, mm -hmm. You know, three was necessary just to create the right balance I was looking for. Um, yeah. A lot of cases you could probably get away with just two. Makes a lot of sense. How about this one? Speaking of lights. It yeah, looks so like I figured I should daylight. throw in one of my uh, recent, you know, studio <laughs> portraits. Um, this one, again, was pretty well received on the community, so I appreciate that. And, um, you know, this was a, a case where... Um, I wanted to create some depth in studio. And in order to do that, I, I took out my atmosphere... Uh, atmosphere aerosol which i'm sure hey, jesse i'm gonna have you hold that up again let's go to your camera here yep. go show that one more time sure thing there you go uh so i believe they carry these amazon adorama um but yeah ultimately allows me to uh in this case i was you know had a two 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 hundredths uh off to either side of um uh, my subject here who's a really talented musician and um you know this is this was a case where this is kind of his first go at a professional shoot so up until this point we were you know, kind of going pretty normal with lighting. Um, and then when I broke this out to him, I think this is where the magic of Magmod kind of shows itself. <laughs> and you show him the back of the camera and, and he lost it. He was just, uh, he, he didn't understand how it happened, but uh, that's the simplicity. It's just that we don't have to do much to, to kind of wow them when we, when we have the right tool. So I put an orange on his right or camera right, uh, mm -hmm. a blue camera left. And I think the important thing was choosing, you know, obviously some complementary colors. Um, which I find myself going with blue and orange quite a lot. Um, I've tried to experiment a little bit and like we saw red and green before. Um, and again, I, I mean, the image looks fine with, without, and I wish I had shared one uh, without kind of that atmosphere in the back, but uh, I had uh, his sister, I believe, uh, spraying uh, the aerosol uh, in between the lights and him, just kind of filling that area uh, to allow, in this case, you have to backlight the, the, the aerosol to, to make it uh, really kind of pop. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was just, you know, positioning her right. So we got like a nice, you know, rim on either side of him. And uh, I think it just, you know, it's a little tricky when you work with the aerosol. Um, in this case, it just kind of came out even. I, I was really happy with the result. And it was just yeah. a simple little addition to take this photo from normal to, you know, something special for him. Nice. Now, was this this shot right here? Was this in the same studio, same place, same shoot? Yep. I mean, that's where I'm coming from, you guys. Now I'm in my my studio in Terrytown, and so this uh -huh. is where I do all my uh, my portrait shoots for the most part. And in this case, yeah, we were just using uh, like a white seamless behind him, uh -huh. um, but not lighting it, so it would appear more gray. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did a bunch of shots with him for you know some branding and and such, and uh, he's a great guy. It was it was fun to work with him. So you guys can see how, how simple, uh, you know, just in a matter of, of minutes that we can take a, a scene like the white one that Jesse did there and actually turn it into something uh, really cool with these colors and light. Um, so you use the gels behind and then what, what size softbox did you use in front here? So in this case, I was using one of the bigger ones since I was here uh -huh. in the studio. I had a 48 inch uh, parabolic. Nice. Nice. How far away do you think you pulled him from the background there? 
So I would say uh, he was roughly, I want to say five or six feet okay. away. He wasn't far. I had a black canvas as the background, so it wasn't the nice. white paper as we had before. Um, I had to make sure that we got the back scene, you know, dark enough so those colors could really uh, kind of shine. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but super simple. You know, only took a minute to set everything up. And then once you're in that spot and you're, you know, you can just fire away and, and do a couple different things. So we ended up using a red, uh, a red gel and a single light just directly behind him. And we turned him kind of side profile and got some cool shots that way. Um, yeah, a lot, of, actually, a lot of opportunities when you have the colors available. Yeah, I, I actually, I saw one of those. In fact, here it is right here. I was looking at this shot as well from the same shoot. It there looks it like is. you did yep. the red. Yeah. Um, very cool. Good stuff. Hey, uh, Mauricio is wondering on, on something like this, did you use modifiers on top of the gels or did you just use the gels? Um, no. So in some cases I might use the, the sphere, you know, just to create a, a bit of a softer, you know, source, but here it was just, uh, just the gels themselves gotcha. and just position cool. them, you know, just out of the frame. So we didn't get any like blaring, you know, hot spots, yeah. uh, coming into the camera. So. I love that. I love that kind of a little bit of like kind of flare kind of look like the light coming off. It looks so nice. Um, hey, Paul was wondering, you know, this image, I would say, let's let's talk about this image as well as even the last one, which was the the wedding one. Um, how long does it normally take to kind of set these up? Um, so I would say the one that was with the bride and groom outside uh, took a little bit more time um, just because, uh, you know, the distance we had, you know, from each light to the couple and, and mm -hmm. depending on how many team members you have, you need someone to stand in as your subject um, and then someone to, you know, run around adjusting the lights. Mm -hmm. So I would say all in all, uh, you know, five minutes would be a lot to get okay. it to, to kind of where we want it to be. And this was one of those where you set it up, went and grabbed them off the dance floor, shot it, sent them right back. Hundred right. percent. So sometimes yeah. I do go outside thinking I'm going to create a certain shot, and maybe it, it just doesn't work out. I mean that that happens. Um, I ra yeah. rather have that than bring them out and have it not happen because I feel like once you put them in front of the camera, they're going to expect to see something later on. You yeah. Know, why you pulled them away from the wedding? There's there's got to be a reason. And exactly. if it didn't work out because you didn't test ahead of time, I think that's just a bad look. That's such a good point, though. Like, like, hey, you know, if you don't deliver those images, they're going to be like, hey, where, where are those shots? Remember when we stepped outside? You know, people are going to remember. Well, that. yeah. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take the I'll take the shot with my assistant in place and then I'll run in and show them that shot. And I'll say, hey, do you want to yeah. be here instead of him? <laughs> That's a good and they already point. know what they're going to get, more or less. Um, and some people have, you know, some people have said, no, we're having too much fun. We're going to hang and just keep dancing. Yeah. And then so you got to be prepared for that as well. <laughs> you know, they don't always go for the idea that you might have. Yeah, I love that. But that's that's such a great way of doing it, showing it to them and saying, you want to be here. I like that. I have um, a collection hey, of images of all, uh, you know, assistants in these really cool <laughs> <laughs> shots that, you know, sometimes I don't want to share it because uh, if they didn't, if the couple didn't go for it, I don't want them to like see it and think, wow, they missed out, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you got uh, you got a really nice compliment and question here from Esteban Gill. Um, Esteban's an amazing photographer up there in Connecticut. He says, what advice would you give to someone that wants to excel in both studio photography and wedding photography? Jealous, you're so good at both. Wow, Esteban's amazing, man. I, I mean, his his TikToks lately and, and reels, are, they've He's been super, it. super inspirational, super helpful, funny. So thank you for that, Esteban. Um, I don't know. It was just like I had a love for portraiture, like studio portrait. And I just, for me, it was, you know, I'm, I'm also into, you know, sustaining uh, a certain lifestyle. And I think the money for me was in more on the wedding side. So yeah. um, portraits to me is kind of like an extra. If like, we don't kind of like, you know, besides like we, we do a ton of headshots and things like that, but we don't push ourselves marketing wise too much on the portraits. Um, so it's really just a, a, a love for portraits and, and seeing all the inspiration across the community and, and the photography community in general yeah. kind of like inspires me to get better at portraits. And um, so advice wise, it's just, you know, it, it's that, it's that boundary we have to get over. Like in the beginning, everyone is just afraid to fail. You know um, I had some walls I had to break down before I could, you know, just kind of tap into that, creative potential that was there. I just was scared to use it. Do you find that doing portraits allows you to kind of be a little bit more creative that, you know, and maybe even experiment with things that you can possibly use later on for wedding days. But cause I, I know for me, I feel like sometimes on a wedding day, like I can't get super crazy and creative unless I know exactly the result I'm going to get. In other words, unless I've already experimented maybe on an engagement shoot or something else. Um, 
Do you ever find that? Like, right. in other so, words, you get to get more creative on portraits? Yeah. So obviously the more you, so especially during the off season in particular, we, uh, we reach out to you know, hair and makeup artists and we try to collaborate yeah. and get all kinds of, you know, uh, so that's the opportunity where you can really take those risks because there's nothing, you know, if you fail, if you mess up, it's not a big deal. Right. <laughs> Nobody yeah. paid money to, to, to be involved in the shoot. So that's where you really have to kind of go for it and then take those, you know, kind of lessons you've learned and the skills you've learned and then translate it into the weddings. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely been helpful. Like I know in particular, um, I have the mag, uh, mag beam mm -hmm. and for a while I've been trying to really get better at using those masks. And, um, admittedly, I still have some trouble kind of getting that look that I've seen, uh, other photographers get. So, you know, that's something that I'll just continue to keep working on here, yeah. uh, in the studio before I kind of take that out into a bride and groom, you know, uh, again, I don't want to do the shot and then not be able to deliver it. So it's, uh, I think it comes down to just, you know, the practice yeah. and that comfortability well, and confidence. It, Jesse, it's funny you say that because I think this video right here of you, that's exactly what you're doing. You're basically experimenting with different mag masks and kind of playing with it, kind of playing with the light and so forth, which this is a video on your YouTube channel. This, yeah, um, this was a fun shoot. It was just the Brady Bunch, I think, shoot that I did that's awesome uh, I love it that was during quarantine so I was set up in the basement at home and just <laughs> kind of making making the best use of the time that's awesome I love it well hey Jesse let's jump into this last image I, I appreciate you taking this time I, I don't mean to take so much of your day up but uh, uh, this last image is pretty incredible and I love that we have a, a little BTS on this one as well so we can show you guys exactly what it looks like but first I gotta say we don't have anything that looks like this in Arizona um, these colors <laughs> are incredible. These fall colors. So, so yeah, this, this, this was in upstate New York, uh, in the Catskill region. And, um, you know, obviously, yeah, you go at the right time of year, you're going to get some amazing, uh, scenery to work with. So, Whoops, sorry about uh, that. Of course, I need to click to the next one already. <laughs> what? Of course, you know, the, the colors we, you know, we work with them in post to really kind of bring them out. Um, uh -huh. it is a beautiful scene to the eye, but of course we want to enhance things a little bit in post, which, which is, uh, just kind of bringing everything to life. So uh, what I do a lot and you'll see in the behind the scene, you can flip to it is I love having that mag box or, uh, well, for the most part, I'm using the mag box in these scenarios, but I love getting it as close as possible to my subjects. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, of course, in order to do that, you need to be able to be comfortable with the compositing or removing it in post. So that's exactly kind of what we had to do here. I have my uh, amazing wife off to the left, kind of giving us some movement in that dress. Um, and yeah, so in this case with, with that parachute dress, uh, there was a little bit of post work in order to kind of extend it and to fix it a little bit and get her out of the scene. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, in this case, like depending on your composition where, you know, in this case, the mag box was completely in that hill of trees. Mm -hmm. I knew that Photoshop, it'd be pretty easy to just, um, you know, kind of content aware or clone it out, um, where I didn't need to necessarily take a plate shot here. Yeah. Um, I love, I love doing this kind of behind the scenes, kind of looking one, looking the other. What, what did you do for the dress? How did you get that dress? Uh, it, was that a different shot that you took it from or did you just, yeah, so we did, we did take a bunch of shots. Um, you know, I, 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 ultimately if I, you know, would spend like another hour on it, I probably could have made it even better with the cloning and stuff, but the purpose of the dress is to be long and flowy. So I did, you know, yeah. I, I was comfortable with where it was. Uh, it is tricky to, to kind of extend like that and, and you can get into some weirdness if you're not careful, but, um, yeah, it's just a, a little bit of tedious work in, in Photoshop yeah. with the clone stamp and yeah, utilizing some second images that maybe she wasn't there. And, um, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time kind of learning that part of it. So, yeah. It looks, uh, it looks amazing, man. But I mean, even the colors just in, in this shot, the behind the scenes, you can see all the colors and stuff. It's not that, you know, I, and, and I gotta, I gotta point out as well is the, the stuff on the hill, the leaves and, and things like that. The fact that you went in there and cleaned it up, um, just, it, it, it would have been more distracting to the eyes. And so I, I think you just, you, you know, you're like, okay, these little type, tiny things that take, you know, you probably clean that up in just a matter of minutes, but it sure makes a difference. Uh, to the, the, yeah. the image. I mean, when I look at an image like this and I'm editing, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be super meticulous to every detail details that I probably no one would ever pick up on are, mm -hmm. are important to me because I'll always see them. Yeah. Um, and I think that translates usually into a better result anyway. So, 
you know, yeah. admittedly you probably spend a little bit extra time than is necessary, but um, like, as, you know, things like, and not in this case, but symmetry is always important. So angles, I tend to uh, inadvertently shoot kind of on a little tilt uh, a lot of times. So I always take care to go in when there's straight lines to deal with and use that kind of perspective uh, correction in Photoshop to, uh, to get everything nice and straight. Uh, I think that's, you know, some details that a lot of people can easily overlook. Um, yeah. Are you saying I think you, that's you, the difference? You saying you used a little bit of that Dutch angle a lot on shots? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I don't do it intentionally. It's just uh, <laughs> you know sometimes that's what ends up happening. Um, as you, as careful as I try to be, if there's straight lines in the image that I can kind of like use, you know, in the frame yeah. and and reference, then usually I'm pretty good. But in the moment, you know, can't be perfect. <laughs> no, for sure. Hey, Jesse, man, this is, this has been fun. Uh, Eric, I think, uh, says it best. He says amazing work. Totally agree. Thank um, you. Eric. Appreciate that. So, uh Oh, we got, uh, we got somebody, uh, spamming the chat now with their, uh, <laughs> with their <laughs> Instagram cash app, PayPal guys, please don't nice. click on those silly links. Um, Hey, a couple questions before we wrap this up. Uh, Abid is saying, which lens is used for the wide angle shot? Um, okay. So, which one are we referencing here? Uh, let's let's look at this. Uh, how about this one right here? This is pretty wide. Okay, I uh, got gotcha. you. So here I'm um, actually. Uh, so I had an 85, an 85 millimeter. Oh, um, this was 85. Were, so you were actually stepped back quite a ways then. I was I was quite a bit back. They were um, they were up on a, a hill quite high. Mm -hmm. um, so my where where my height of where my head was was probably right at their waist level. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, 85, I went back far enough to make sure I got the, the right composition that I wanted. Um, but I'm like you, Trevor, I use a lot of, a lot of prime lenses. Mm -hmm. um, since I've kind of moved to Sony, uh, be, coming from Nikon, Nikon, I had more of the, the zoom range, now more yeah. primes. So uh, just a matter of moving my feet. Yeah. You know, you know what's great about using the 85 here is you got that little bit of compression where, you know, like you're pulling them in closer to the mountain where if it was a wider lens, that, that hill behind them would have been further back. Um, yeah, it just wouldn't have been the same. Yeah, so it works really nicely there. Um, a couple last minute question, our last little comments here. Uh, Mommy, we appreciate you tuning in. Um, you got uh, Sabelle had mentioned he loved that photo there. And there was one other, uh, Mike, this is kind of interesting. I like this. He's talking about how um, he says, uh, hey, let me bring this up in the middle here. And thanks for these videos, learning a lot. I shoot mostly motor spot, sports and use remote flash. Just got my starter kit. Can't wait to try it at the racetrack. Going to try car shoots and maybe looking to portraits. Um, that would be interesting. I, you know, using uh, MagMod with car shoots, I, I don't even know how flash works when you're doing motor sports, motor sports and things. I, um, <laughs> I almost would be afraid I'm going to cause some kind of distraction uh, for uh, for the athletes, but uh, for the driver, that's really yeah. cool. I'd be interested to see. Uh, yeah, I mean, a big big thing there is reflections when you're dealing with cars and and mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So definitely having uh, some grids maybe to control will help be helpful. And compositing, yeah. a lot. Of, I know a lot of photographers who shoot cars end up using composites. So composites, yeah. Good point. Well, Jesse, it sure has been a pleasure, man. I, I really appreciate having you on here. And, uh, and guys, if you haven't already done it, let me bring up his Instagram one more time. Um, go check out his Instagram, Jesse Rinka Photography. So it's Jesse underscore Rinka. I'm throwing a little it. Latin flair for you. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and then the portrait one is Jesse Rinka underscore portraits. So definitely go check him out there. Go give him a follow. Uh, Jesse's an amazing dude. And, and Jesse, we sure appreciate you taking the time today to to come on here and share some of these images with us. Uh, you, you it's been an honor, man. I've been looking forward to doing one of these with you guys for a while. So I appreciate the opportunity. And, um, you know, if anyone has any questions, they want to send me a message through Instagram, by all means, I'm an, I'm an open book. I want to help everybody. So that's awesome. We sure appreciate you. Jesse's uh, actually one of our Magmon ambassadors as well. He, he's such a talented and, and, uh, and incredible photographer, always helping out in the community. Uh, so definitely uh, feel free, like, like you said, to hit him up and ask him any questions. Um, you rock, my friend. I sure appreciate Thank this you, opportunity Trevor. to talk to you. So, uh, guys, we have these shows every single week. So make sure if you uh, haven't already hit the little button on Facebook that says you want to be notified when the show comes on, do that. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit the little subscribe button and even the bell notification that will tell you when we put these shows up on YouTube as well. Uh, so you can watch it there if that's if that's a better viewing experience for you. So. 
Um, thanks again. Thanks, Jesse. Appreciate you. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks so uh, much. For this episode of How I Shot It. Appreciate you guys. Bye, everyone.